Good afternoon to all the participants present here. I welcome you all on behalf of the Department of Biotechnology to the national webinar on marine research and aquaculture. It is a lecture series that will be there till 28th July. So we have eminent speakers from all over India talking on the different aspects of marine research and aquaculture. At this outset, I would like to sincerely thank our management, Dr. Maria Zina Johnson, our Chancellor Ma'am, and Dr. Marie Johnson, our President Sir, for providing us this platform to conduct this webinar series. It is also my duty to thank the advisors, Dr. Sasi Prabha, Dr. Loga Shanmugam, Dr. S.S. Rao, Dr. Sundari, and Dr. Igni Sebasti Prabhu. A special thanks to Dr. Wilson Aruni, our Pro Vice Chancellor, who has been instrumental in bringing out this webinar. Today is the first day of this webinar series. And uh, we have a speaker, Dr. M. Armugam from CAS in Marine Biology, Anamala University. Sir, uh, will be giving out a talk on drugs from the sea, a voyage. So, uh, Dr. Armugam is specialized in the field of marine biotechnology and marine natural products. He has an experience in teaching and research for around 16 years. He has guided 13 uh, PhD students, of which uh, nine of students have been awarded PhD. He has also uh, guided MPhil students. He has various awards to his name, including the Dad Summer Trainee uh, Award, the DST Travel Grant Awardee, NUS Visiting Fellow. Uh, he has awards from Sweden. He has a Best Researcher Award in 2016 and 17. Also, he has various projects to his name, funded by MOES, UGC, DBT, DST. With a number of publications to his credit, he has a very good uh, citation and H-index, which shows his research capability. Sir has visited um, countries like Singapore, Germany, Sweden, France, and has ample amount of experience in the area of marine natural products. I request Sir to uh, present his talk today. Sir, please welcome, Sir. Sir, thank over you, to you, Dr. Sir. Ramesh Kumar. Yes, thank you, Dr. Ramesh Kumar. Yes, sir. And uh, for uh, a very good welcoming me to this uh, wonderful webinar, which are organized by the Sadhvabha Institute of Science and Technology. And also my special and sincere thanks to my senior, Dr. M. Maslamani Selvam, who is the organizing secretary of this program. And also, I should thank the authorities of Sadhivama Institute of Science and Technology, Chennai. And today I'm going to present the title is Drag from the Sea, a voyage. My dear friends, are you here? Yes, sir. We can hear you, sir. Fine. My dear friends, as you know, the ocean is provide a lot to us in terms of food, in terms of energy, in terms of medicines, in terms of current, etc. Similarly, this is, all are very well known about this pandemic period, and this is very challenging situations in all over the world. And the searching of drugs, not only for the corona virus, the searching of drugs in national as well as the international level. It's very long history. And especially in India, Ministry of Air Sciences Government of India has created a separate platform for drug from the sea program. Almost all over India, 14 research institutions which are very much involved to find out how we can develop a potential drug from the sea. Because the, you know the India is very vast coastline around more than 8,100 uh, square kilometers which are covering by the coastlines. So that's why the source of the drugs is very, very vast. And also the ocean almost covering all the East Coast, starting from the West to East Coast, our uh, country which are covering almost all the coastlines 
and maximum starting from the uh, coromandel coast to east uh, coast of india so plenty sources which are available for providing medicines chemicals or some other materials what are the materials which are available in the marine it's very very unique when compared to the other terrestrial organisms or the terrestrial counterparts and my dear friends now i'll go to my presentation please one minute i just share my screen then i will discuss one by one so the title of my uh, today talk is drug from a white my dear friends this is my university almost all of you very well know about the university it's a state university of chandra coming up to establish in 1929 and also we have the lot of ranks and recognition by the chen and education by harvard university as well as we have the rank that is 11th among us the india top 10 collaborating institutions by the nature in so anamalai university is a university with 49 departments of study in a single roof and also the anamalai university has institutions in the field of chemistry pharmacology research and scientific 17th rank of Uh, for publications in all the subject areas from 2002 to 2013 and we have reached the scopus index by the national science and technology management information system department of science and technology and the ministry of science and technology government of india new delhi and the center the center is called as the center of advanced in brain biology short as ஆக்வாட்டிக் <laughs> almost my seniors in other class they are more because they are studying uh, this is, uh, slides is not uh, uh, necessary for the our classmates but it's somewhat new to others and uh, i already told you that's a lot of the organizations uh, for our center and also this is the center has been striving hard to rise standards to an international platform and in india some of the universities or the institutions having have been focusing on the marine sciences and related research this is dedicated uh, towards research on marine natural products and drug discovery is to be addressed the such a center not only the delivers ample opportunities for the ample opportunities to the students to attend research domain but also the researchers for the development of drugs for various diseases prevalent into the society finally the center creates an environment that they ensure a balance between the marine environment and explain or explore the biotic components for the drug development my dear friends the drug from the sea as we see this slide this is a fish particular fish called as lionfish that means the main is that we are gold mine on our earth what do you want you want food you want medicine you want energy anything else the ocean is ready to provide us the only thing is we should explore the organisms explore the sources for the right point of view so that is very much important and when we are discussing the drug from the sea we should know the marine natural products the marine natural products nothing but what are the chemical compounds which are produced by the marine organisms called as the marine natural products the bacteria molecules from marine sources find extensive traditional use and pre predominantly as a crude form and also helping as templates for synthetic preparations and the world markets 
value of marine derived drug reaches around 4.8 billion in 2011 and it should be raised from 5.3 billion us dollars in 2002 12 and it will be reach 10.6 billion by 2019 and marine environment it's a harboring and wealth of natural products through the producing the pharmaceuticals nutritional supplements enzymes and other cosmetics why the marine organisms the natural products of the market because the marine organisms are the marine environment it is very unique characteristics of marine life it is due to their rich biodiversity adaptation predation environment application and signal and all these categories is somewhat very unique so that's why the marine organism having lot of adaptations and also the most of the marine organ organisms are rich environment that's why they exercise they should synthesize the unique metabolites or the molecules for survival on the environment uh, and also the rich biodiversity almost the biodiversity was when compared to the land and this is the many natural products as well as the biomaterials which are available are produced from the marine sources and my dear friends the compounds which are classified into major groups is the carbohydrates fats are the fatty acids ceramics as well as the nucleotides so in the case of ceramics which are dealing with the development of biomaterial from the sea but remaining all the four categories like the carbohydrate protein fatty acids are the fat nucleotides all these things which are responsible for producing lot of molecules for the uh, various applications especially the chondrite in sulfate as well as the chitin and chitosan this is a very unique uh, uh, molecules which are plentifully available on the marine sources hello hello yes, yes sir it can continue yeah 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 okay and uh, and what is the depth of these compounds how they can derive how they can produce that means marine diversity including the three important categories first starting from microbes then flora as well as the fauna so in the case of micro microbes which comprises bacteria fungi and actomyces in the case of flora micro algae sea grass and mangroves so these are the major this <laughs> flora and in the case of fauna the group which consists of invertebrates as well as the vertebrates and uh, these are the chemical classes of marine natural products what are the major chemical classes of the marine natural products starting from the aliphatic alkaloids carbohydrates terpenoids amino acids and peptides and others so these are the major uh, classifications and what are the this slide shows the natural products from the marine flora starting from the algae uh, to the sea grass because the uh, algae are the sea weeds they are contribute lot to us in terms of the food items as well as a lot of uh, medicinal pro products and uh, similarly for the uh, the phytoplankton group natural products from the marine microbes this is very much uh, important which are involving by the bacteria fungi and actomyces and this this slide shows the marine natural products from the fauna in the case of faunal diversity uh, starting from the porifera nidaria echinoderms cardate and mollusca they have to contribute lot of chemical substances which including the terpenoids alkaloids aliphatic groups or the aliphatic molecules steroids carbohydrates amino acids and so on and this is the uh, information so the slide shows the diversity of uh, invertebrate when compared to uh, uh, land the marine invertebrate diversity uh, is very vast there are phyllas which are available uh, of which 10 phyla exist in terrestrial environment 
and 22 phyla are living in the sea of which 14 are exclusively on marine so the marine the major marine phyla are shown in the uh, um, especially in the uh, arthropods groups that means the cretaceous farms and uh, these are the compounds a uh, list of compounds which are synthesized by the uh, marine microbes in its uh, activities starting from the blood pressure and as well as the supplement material and also a lot of cosmetic products and food additives antioxidant material agriculture materials just like uh, organic manure and even we, uh, we have produced some of the energy from the uh, microbes and uh, this slide shows main algae as you know the seaweeds classify into three major groups starting from the green brown and red algae In maximum all the seaweeds they have to provide lot of uh, uh, compounds or the molecules most of the compounds such as the laminarin other fucoidin polyphenols or even the methanolic other extracts and flavonoids all these things which are responsible for the cancer so most of the marine uh, uh, seaweed source or the seaweed molecules which are very much responsible for anti cancer activities and also this is the one slide shows the potential of the seaweeds the particular seaweeds we can provide number of compounds or number of materials starting from lipids fatty acids sterols protein phycobilt proteins phenolic components lot of other anti oxidant molecules carbohydrate agar or agarose in addition to that the many natural products the bad compounds only from the uh, marine organisms also lot other waste material what are the waste materials which are comes out from the uh, sea or oceans while are by catching the fish apple their skin their uh, what is that their skin the everything everything uh, uh, it's dumped into the sea considered as a waste but as a marine biotechnologist we have to develop a product very much useful product from the waste at the concept of my dear friends sir you told that the lot of uh, sources which are available and we can derive all the uh, uh, organisms very easily no it is not possible because when you are ava and biva i want d that is very much important because lot of venomous fishes are the venomous organisms which are available on the sea and starting from this slide shows the uh, lion fish uh, as well as the ray fish so both of the fish they have provide both of the uh, fish they have provide uh, very good analgesic compound or the analgesic molecule to the nature and this slide shows the orthotoxin the orthotoxin is analgesic agent as well as they can act as the pain relieving uh, uh, agent from the uh, ray fish as well as the lion fish and for example the venom components the venom is nothing what are the materials that means the compounds which are synthesized by the animal at just one drop of venom which consists of more than 25000s of molecules so what are the major molecules which are present are the venom components starting from the bradykinin this is a list of compounds or the molecules which are available starting from the bradykinin hemolysin serotonin histamine prostaglandin hyaluronidase nucleosidase alkaline proteases acid phosphatase fibrinolysin number of uh, the enzymes number of compounds or the molecules which are synthesized by the a drop of uh, venom which are uh, secreted by the marine animal and my dear friends you just to see the uh, slides what is the potential of uh, uh, potential of marine organisms in terms of lethality or mortality 
Cone snails are marine snails found in reef environments throughout the world. All species of cone snails have a highly sophisticated venom production apparatus and delivery system. The venom is produced in a long tubular duct that is often several times the length of the snail and is attached to a muscular bulb. Hollow, spear-like teeth are made in a radular sac and filled with venom. In fish-eating species, the cone detects its prey using fuel sensors in its cyber. How these lankish animals they can easily catch the very Upon contact with the prey, the fruit is impales a harpoon like tube, and any exposed Just tissue injects the venom and paralyzes very much its prey. To kill the organisms, once the animal is killed, then they can easily swallow. This is the way the toxins which are synthesized by this particular animal, which are very much helpful for catching the prey for their food purposes. And you can uh, see, after injecting the uh, toxins to the uh, fish, they can immediately paralyze. That shows the potential of uh, potential of, uh, uh, of compounds which are synthesized by the uh, corners. And my dear friends, then you can ask a question, sir. So any other recent developments which are available on the marine uh, nature products research are yes a lot of information which are available and these are the major groups which are uh, involving in the drug discovery regime among the 34 marine phylas and starting from the chordata arthropods just like the crabs um, prawn etc and nidaria such as the jellyfish and molas echinoderms and uh, poriferous And this is the list of anti-cancer compounds which are derived from the marine organisms. Even these are the organisms as, uh, which are providing a very good uh, anti-cancer compound. And most of the compounds, they have successfully completed uh, clinical trials. Now it is available in the form of Yondelish, uh, Helavan, and And the, these are the slides shows the antiviral and the analgesic of our uh, agents of the molecules, that is the withdrawal, zinc notide, and omega-3 uh, acid ethyl esters from the lowers, available in the form of lowers. And especially the zinc notide, zinc notide available in the form of trials, which are very much necessary, or which are very much useful, are alternative for the morphine. My dear friends, those are the patient is very much affected by the cancer or the AIDS, Doctors immediately prescribe the drug as the morphine to the or uh, reduce the pain. But the morphine shows the uh, uh, lot of side effects. But when compared to the morphine, this alternative drugs, which are derived from the marine organisms, they show very potent and also they does not cause toxicity. And my dear friends, these are the molecules, that means one orthohexodical is then glycerol 3 phosphocholine ester, which are derived uh, from a, a molas, that means the nudibranch molas from our center at my laboratory. This is very uh, potent uh, agents for the anti cancer drug. And this is uh, the slide shows the, you can see how the, uh, uh, the, the pain, uh, marine organisms available or act as. Uh, just like the predators. And you can see the uh, toxic or venomous spines which are present on their tail regions. And in this slide, this part shows the, uh, you can see their uh, spine. And you, you also see the arrangements of barbels. And these are the, these are called as the barbels. And you can see how the barbels which are uniquely arranged in the opposite manner. Once these uh, uh, spines which are entering into the victims, what happens? This entering into the victim, and once you have to remove the uh, these available bubbles are retained on their body. That means the victim victim bubbles. So it leads for a lot of inflammations. So that's what the immediate uh, uh, responses, very severe pain, and sometimes the mortality is happening. But they shows the painful lessons, but also they have to provide 
very good drugs very good molecules especially the analgesic as well as the anti cancer molecules from the venom compounds and my dear friends this slide shows the we have recently studied uh, uh, the potent uh, coagulation venom from the sea snake my dear friends the sea snake is a very dangerous uh, animals which are available on most uh, toxic animals which are available on the earth because in addition to the uh, uh, tetrodotoxins from the uh, uh, puffer fishes this type of uh, uh, the fishes they have to produce very unique uh, molecules or venom components and which is responsible for the coagulations so once the blood is coagulates uh, definitely you should know what is the impact of the coagulations of the blood immediately the entire circulatory system which are affected so it leads for immediate mortality so we have identified the what is the protein and what is the uh, the molecular weight what are the name of the peptides all this kind of information we have derived and uh, you can see in uh, we can how we can uh, collect the uh, venom from this sea snake and uh, this uh, work is uh, uh, did that my laboratory and uh, you can just take a, a snake and you can you can if you are giving the gent gentle press on their head regions they can milking their venom immediately so at the at this tip you can just uh, placing a end of tube and you can collect the venom and this is the molecular uh, uh, weights of this isolated venoms which are derived from the sea snake my dear friends and after uh, the study of sea snake venom we are not only studying the sea snake venom we are also concentrating on some other molluscan group of animals this is the uh, animals sepia which are producing uh, on the collagens especially the type 1 collagen and as you know the collagen it's very very much available among all the animals but in the case of type 1 collagens which are only present in the placenta so that's what the type 1 collagens uh, um, attracting much uh, attractions by the researchers and also they have a lot of uh, the medicinal aspects of the medicinal properties and after the isolating of uh, the uh, type 1 collagen we have uh, derived or we have making different uh, biomaterial such as the uh, film as well as the gel and after production of uh, the biomaterial uh, such as the gel as well as the uh, uh, film then we have introduced some of the antibiotics and what are their uh, drug uh, delivering efficacies by this uh, uh, biomaterial which are synthesized by the sepia so this kind of studies is also um, uh, studied And this information is available on this uh, a very good journal process by this and my dear friends the next slide shows and uh, this is the uh, some of the biomaterials which are uh, uh, derived uh, from the sepia the cephalopod group of animals so after uh, um, loading the antibiotics in the gels as well as the film the slide shows how the uh, animals um uh, they, they are once they affected in wound, wounded animals how they can recover when we are giving the dose to the animals so um almost within the 10 days within the 10 days almost all the wound is uh, closed from the initial stage to the left side slide and to the right side slide my dear friends so these are the previous stories about uh, uh, our center as well as my laboratory and uh, i already told you that the ministry of health sciences identified 14 institutions in the india uh, in india and center of advanced in marine biology is uh, one among the center and uh, ministry of health sciences extended the support for two times uh, with the support of our uh, uh, dynamic director and former dynamic director and my mentor professor t balasubramanian sir and uh, now this program is going on and uh, we have uh, developed 24 uh, different lead molecules uh, for the anti fertility starting from the anti fertility anti malarial anti bacterial and anti hiv so these are the reports which are still available and we have submitted the report to the ministry of air sciences for developing the lead molecule from the sea and also this is a very major achievement from our center especially for the drug development research apart from this we have produced the the low molecular weight hyaluronic acid from the molas my dear friends but uh, anybody knows about the hyaluronic acid 
actually the hyaluronic acid is a is just like a synovial fluids which are available on on the all our joints once the concentration of the hyaluronic acids which are reduced what happens it leads for arthritis it leads for arthritis so that's why especially the low molecular weight of hyaluronic acid play a major role uh, so that's why we have targeted the low, uh, low molecular weight of hyaluronic acid which are derived from the marine molars and uh, uh, their properties all these things and in addition to that uh, some of the fuco sanding uh, extract or the purifications were did at my laboratories and these are the chromatographic analysis uh, were performed at, uh, at our center and maximum all the fractions shows Uh, very good uh, uh, potential, very good uh, activities in terms of anti-hyaluronidase as well as the anti-tyrosinase. Why we are study the anti-tyrosinase as well as the anti-hyaluronidase? We will discuss. So, my dear friends, what is the applications on these uh, uh, things, especially the fuco sanding? So, these are the normal skins which are shows here at the top. And uh, what is that uh, uh, worries for once you are reached in the forty or forty five plus? So one, what happened? The aging process. We can't stop our aging, but when we are taking some of the uh, CVs or when we are applying some of the fuco sanding or other uh, materials from the um, uh, CVs, definitely we can reduce or prolonging the aging process. For example, wrinkles caused. That means the surgo wrinkles caused. It is due to the effect of hyaluronidase enzymes on the dermal cells. So that's why. Once, if you are uh, if you are uh, um, involving that particular process with the influence of hyaluronidase, definitely we will prolonging the formation of wrinkles. Similarly, that the uh, tanning tanning means that it's just like a darkness. It is caused due to the effect of thyrosinase thyrosinase enzymes on the dermal cells. So once the thyrosinase action is happened, what uh, the, it leads for the uh, dermal or skin is should be dark. And uh, so, in that case, when we are taking the fuco sanding, which consists of hyaluronidase as well as the tyrosinase, they may be acts on both the cases, either the aging or the wrinkle formations, as well as the darkness of the skin will be reduced. So, uh, we can uh, in future we can developing a cosmetics or the cosmetic material from the CVs. And my dear friend, this is the another important group of animals which are reared at my laboratory. rearing the green muscles and this is in in captive in conditions my dear friend you should know or most of the marine biologists or aquaculturists they should know the uh, shell or the muscles called as the pernavridis so this pernavridis what happened uh, they are the they are the particular group of animals available as a cluster just like a grapes how it is possible this particular animals they can uh, they can synthesize or they can producing a yeah, Fine, fine filaments, or fine hairy-like uh, projections. So that the developed fine-like or filaments-like uh, materials, which are helpful for attaching the rocky substrate. But our uh, target or our aim is: what is the particular proteins which are responsible for making the particular filaments or hairy-like projections called as the bistrates? our aim is how we can developing a biomaterial especially for the in the field of biomedical applications or suturing the open heart surgery or even the some other um, what is that uh, delivering at the time of delivering the uh, opening the skin or opening this particular area so in this case the suturing is a somewhat painful or difficult process in that case if you are developing a biomaterials or the bioplaster definitely just take the material and peel the uh, uh, product and you should apply on this particular area you will be clear no need of stitches so that's what we have planned and almost we have success on this story you can see how much uh, uh, the peptides which are available on this uh, biosis thread and this is the hplc analysis of uh, the thing and this is a purification process of all these things and This is already published in the uh, peptide, International Journal of Peptide Research and Therapeutics. And also the process in the stingray venom. And recently, uh, uh, the, we have developing some of the molecules from the stingray. Uh, stingray is very potent uh, uh, venom or toxic animals which are available on the. Yeah, see. 
sorry, C. And um, I already told you that how they can synthesize the molecules because they are having a very specialized uh, spines on the dorsal regions. That means the trail regions. And uh, they have to secrete the secretor or synthesize the potent venom for getting the prey. And we have did uh, uh, some of the work on this aspect. We have collected the stingray from our coast and then we have processing the uh, animals and uh, how we can collect the spines and then we can go for the processing at the laboratory. And uh, then the storage and the homogenization process, every spines which are uh, uh, kept into their liquid nitrogens and then we are processing further. And this, this slide shows the, um, some of the, again, the uh, collagens and their applications. And, but this is somewhat different. This is, for not, this is not for the drug delivery applications. This is for the, um, developing the collagens uh, from the particular group of animals. And also we have developing uh, uh, the bone powder. That means the raw bone powder from the other group of animals. And then we can developing uh, the collagen as well as the hydroxyapatite. That means the hydroxyapatites, which are uh, um, derived from the bone, bone of the uh, ma marine animals, like the ray fish, then we can developing as the scaffold. So the scaffold, which consists of collagen as well as the hydroxyapatite for the uh, bone tissue engineering. Because uh, as you know, the lot of accident and other uh, um, uh, natural as well as the man-made accident is happened. And uh, most of the affected areas, our body, especially the legs and uh, our, uh, what is the hands. So that's why the bone replacement is also the need of our. So that's why we have to developing an artificial uh, uh, bone through the collagen as well as the hydroxyapatite, especially for the smaller area through the bone tissue engineering process. The work is going on. <laughs> And my dear friend, this, this slide shows the, uh, this is, uh, what is it, uh, C, urchin. And the C urchins, you can see the number of spines which are available on the C urchin. And, uh, and once we have uh, uh, collected the animals, remove the spine from the C urchins, then we can go for their, um, uh, what is the uh, cross section of uh, the particular uh, spine of a C urchin. And what a beauty is, when we are cross-sectioning the spine of a sea urchin coming under the echinoderm phyla, which are very much similar in the case of normal human bones. It's somewhat miracle. And uh, when we are developing such kind of the uh, sea urchin spines, that means the artificial bone in the sense, definitely we can repairing the particular area which are affected or damaged by the nature. So that's what we have planned and the work is also the under uh, process. And this is the recently we have prepared the hydrogels, hydrogel from the seaweeds. And after uh, the collecting the seaweeds, and then we can developing the hydrogels. As, uh, hydrogels, uh, in the sense, it is in the form of membrane, just like a carrier, carrier for the antimicrobial drug. We have evaluated the drug delivery uh, purposes, especially for uh, the anti uh, cancers as well as the antimicrobial. Activities. And uh, this is also so the, we have uh, recently developed the drug delivering potential uh, type of type 1 collagens from the eel fish also. That means we have developing the uh, wealth from the waste because while we are processing the eel fish, what happened? The entire skins which are removed and just throats. The, the remaining fleshy portions only consume for food purposes. So, but the, what we are uh, uh, doing on this aspect Actually, the, uh, we have targeted or we are dealing with the skin only. That means waste material of this particular fish. And then we can processing, get the type 1 collagen for development of drug delivery applications. And this is uh, uh, the other, another recent information. We have developing the bioluminescent uh, uh, bacteria from the marine sources, especially the, uh, some of the deep sea fishes at my laboratory. And uh, bioluminescent bacteria or light producing bacteria that are predominantly present in the seawater or even the marine sediments, the surface of uh, decomposing fish and, the, and in the gut uh, of marine microbes. And uh, what happened, our ultimate aim, we should develop uh, not only the uh, biomaterial, we should develop some of the glorious or luminous uh, material, dressing material, which are very much affect, uh, um, attracted by the audience as well as the public. So that's what we have developing a luminescent uh, 
material or the luminescence uh, items uh, from the marine microbes uh, or that means bioluminescent bacteria. And uh, another recent uh, findings and promises, my dear friend, then you can ask a question, sir, only the biomaterials are the drugs are the molecules which are uh, synthesized by the organisms. Uh, you can give any other example uh, in international level, uh, in the sense definitely, marine organisms not only producing or synthesizing the molecules, they are also producing the gold. This is a very recent information. Uh, might be, uh, some of them are, might be know about this uh, story. And the gold, you see the photo gallery, which are uh, produced by the bacteria. And uh, according to the researcher at uh, Michigan State University, and it's, uh, they can survive on the extreme toxic environment and they can create, not the 22 carat, they can create the 24 carat pure gold, it is possible. The bacteria is called as the Delphicia, Delphicia acidivorous. What the process is behind on the screens? This hot different mechanism, gold ions, which are dissolved in the water, especially in the sea water, is somewhat toxic. So when the bacteria senses them, it releases a protein called Delphibactin A. So particular proteins which are released by the bacteria, then the protein acts as a shield for the bacteria to protect this kind of environment. And that uh, proteins changes the poisonous ions which are available in and around the area of the bacteria into harmless particles that is called as, and that is accumulated the outside, uh, outside of the cells by the um, bacteria that is called the, called as the pure gold, just like a pop out. So this information is recently available in the international level, and uh, and uh, this is another information. Uh, doctors are trying and uh, what is that unorthodox approach to treat bone bacteria is in the skin. Uh, Brazilian uh, doctors they are taking experimental approach to treat the bones using the tilapia skin, just traditionally, after processing the tilapia, and just, uh, uh, what is that, remove their skins and uh, applying into the bones, which are treated using the pig or humans. And then it's a transfer of the collagen, a healing uh, portion to their victim skins. And also the institute uh, to turn to tilapia as an alternative <laughs> In the community who suffered from the bones, and uh, this kind of uh, approaches is very much ap uh, applicable for our soldier or even the army peoples also. That is possible. Why we are uh, regularly using the uh, conventional or side effected medicines? We are uh, thinking the alternative material for applying or removing, uh, reducing their burns. And uh, this is some of the uh, tilapia skins be used as the bandage burns. Yes, nature are the um, natural materials which are reducing their bones. And my dear friends, then the some of the other uh, research institute in UI, uh, UK, they have developing uh, optical features embedded on the marine shells uh, to have developed a responsive or transparent displays. Because they're the unique uh, uh, animal, they're having a particular uh, materials. Uh, the, uh, what the research says that the natural optical structures may serve as a yeah, design it is guide for engineering polar uh, selective and also the controllable transparent displays that require in uh, no internal light source. Just uh, developing a such kind of a biomaterial, you can apply even at your outdoor doors or even in the indoor doors, whatever it is, it yeah, become yeah, illuminated. So this is our, another recent findings from UK. And another information is uh, the green fluorescent protein, GFP, which are derived from the particular, uh, what is that, uh, jellyfish, I, I think jellyfish, and reveal the structure of uh, pyramidal nerve cells in the cortex of a mouse brain. And uh, particular GFP proteins, which are uh, act as a probe to reveal or to study the cortex of a mouse brain. Similarly, when some of the stroke is happened, some of the blockages happen on the, uh, what is that, uh, uh, arteries of uh, brain, human brain also, then if you want to analyze this, diagnose it, definitely we, we, we could apply such kind of the GFP into the brain and we are studied well. And my friends, and what is the general remark, sir? You are sailing on the, uh, uh, what is that, uh, drug from the C program and what is the general remark? 
uh, almost the patents what are the patents which are available on this particular area yeah? almost more than 500 uh, patents which are available from the marine resources and are the maximum um, 50 more than 50% proved compounds that are derived from the uh, marine sources almost 1000 compounds available that means available in the form of purified materials and that's what number of publications which are available on this particular area more than 1500 publications are available and also these are the collection methods Uh, which we are regularly using for that and this is some of the other international collection method but uh, or even we are uh, um, attempting the scuba diving and as well as the snorkeling for collecting the marine organisms and somewhat uh, we don't have the such kind of the automated uh, vessel facilities for collecting the marine animals but we are uh, uh, getting or we get the support from the local fishermen as well as we have the some of the small sea water research vessels we can go and collect the animals for our purposes and also the uh, collaborative investigations that is very much important since the drug development uh, particularly uh, for an ideal therapeutic agent is long expensive and uh, drudgery process that require multi disciplinary collaborations among the educational institutions and research laboratories and uh, healthcare professionals so that's why our uh, prime minister uh, narendra modi announced the deep sea missions and how we can utilize this in with the resource for the betterment of for the development of various materials in terms of medicines products uh, all these things for the well being of society so in this case once uh, uh, the research is ready to share our hands from national into the international level in sense definitely we can achieve best and also the duration that is very much important most of the fellows are uh, regularly asking why the research is not producing yeah drug for this pandemic coronavirus my dear friends uh, this kind of things not happen at a single night we have to work hard so that's why all our researchers they are involving maximum level maximum level to developing a, a drug or molecule for curing this pandemic uh, disease called as the coronavirus covid 19 because it's a very long process it's a very long process a lengthy process almost 10 to 15 years we should involving for uh this scenario then only we can develop being a very promising drugs into the society and uh, these are the informations regarding the general remarks and what are the challenges and targets yes if you are involving into their uh, research a uh, lot of challenges and uh, the targets we have to fix the target but we are also facing lot of challenges starting from the sample collection screening revalidation identification bio safety recycling the waste and cost so these are the things we should uh, uh, considering while processing or developing the biomolecules or drug from the sea and also but we should concentrate the uh, animals or the organisms what are they starting from marine microorganisms other symbi symbiotic group or even the, we are also considering the biofuel production in pharmaceutical uh, product nutraceutical agents are material and we are also developing some of the nano material and not, uh, last but not least we have developing some of the beneficial uh, uh, material or biomedical material from the waste at the concept of wealth from the waste so in this aspect we need lot of collaborations and coordinations almost we already share our uh, hands into the international platform of course the national funding agencies or uh, that means our uh, uh, government of india they have provided a uh, lot of support to us and uh, definitely Uh, uh with the support of government of india and uh, the collaborations with the international uh, research institute or the universities we have developing a very promising leads are the drugs from the sea uh, or the ocean very future and uh, uh, all this uh, the credentials are all this uh, output uh, from my laboratory recently department of science and technology from my laboratory Uh, uh, and uh, identify my laboratory as national facility program and this is the first national facility programs which are uh, um, supported by the department of science and technology to anamala university that means 90 years of anamala university history at the worth of 3 crores and uh, recently we have uh, uh, launched the specific website for that and what is our uh, services and what is our who we are and what are the facilities are available what are the details of our collaborations and peoples are involving on the same area so this kind of information the particular website 
and uh, this is the uh, facilities which are available at my laboratory maximum what are the instrumentation facilities which are available all are in working in condition and we are ready to provide our services at very cheaper rate when compared to the any other institutions starting from the hpdlc so the uh, hplc uh, such as the analytical as well as the preparative hplc and we have the uh, lsr reader uh, and uh, uh, recently our uh, uh, laboratory equipped with the lcms facility Uh, that means the uh, ultra high performance liquid chromatography uh, lc ms ms 80 40 facilities this facility is available at iit madras and trichy nits trichy and in between these areas this kind of especially the triple quarter pole lc ms ms facilities not available uh, especially in tamil nadu so we have these such kind of facilities those who are the researcher are very much interested to do some are working on the lc ms or the what is that um, chemical fingerprinting Our uh, sequencing of your lower molecular peptide in sense, you are always welcome, and we are ready to support you. And uh, this is the another uh, uh, other facilities which are available, and we have the anti-microbial screening facilities for the twelve human pathogen facilities, and uh, we are um, immediately accept the samples for screening the anti-microbial activities, uh, including the bacterial as well as the fungal. and these are the, some of the informations which are uh, uh, available or which are comes out very significant contributions to the science and uh, my research output starting from the nature uh, during 2004 as a phd student and then uh, my as well as our why it is going on and uh, my dear friends this is my research team and uh, uh, my name is as you know that the i am as a principal investigator and my mentor professor t dr t balasubramaniam he is a project advisor and personally um, he is a mentor and dynamic director a former director of our center and uh, i uh, on this uh, happiest occasions uh, i should thanks maximum all the funding agencies starting from on the biotechnology ministry of health sciences you know grant commissions as well as the dad and even recently i have awarded the erasmus fellowship by the um, uh, what is it gent university uh, and uh, i'm worked at the uh, kda center for biotechnology albano university center prakpo so my dear friends uh, i hope that this uh, lecture or the information somewhat uh, create a limelight to uh, this particular area how we can developing or how we can involve in this area but once you are ready to involving or once you are ready to deep in dive we need we need patience we need patience and we uh, we need a lot of calmness and all these things to achieve our level best so thank you very much thank you sir thank you sir thank you for the wonderful uh, colorful presentation with a lot of videos and uh, animations uh, i hope the participants would have enjoyed it very much uh, we have a few questions sir from the yes. participants yes uh, one of which is uh, they would like to know what is the prospect of seaweeds in the future uh, especially for the seaweed lot of prospect not only for future it is also in present uh, scenario because we can we can developing lot of materials in terms of organic manure uh, uh, from organic manure to the drug lot of opportunities a lot of promising are there but we should uh, uh, dealing the seaweeds targeting our aim but that means targeting our goals whether you prefer the molecules development or you can developing the biomaterial development like that then you can succeed your goal so lot of promising are there okay and uh, with respect to this luminescent bacteria sir yes uh, does it have any purpose yeah uh, does it have any importance important for uh, their host animal or important for us no sir important for researchers yes uh, the bioluminescent animal for example you can think once we are uh, developing a bioluminescent protein and uh, this is my idea and uh, you can create so do uh, especially the our fishermen even it's very particular in tamil nadu fishermen they are regularly uh, deal with lot of crises by the neighboring countries 
because in C there is no boundary. Okay. So we can creating a natural boundary by the natural material. That is possible. This is the one way for utilizing such kind of the bioluminescent material or bioluminescent protein from the marine microbes. And uh, another participant would like to know whether there is any medicine that is available for viral diseases from uh, marine products, sir. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes. Not, not, why the person asking a question for simple the antiviral activities, but we are not dealing with the COVID-19. This is very, very rare and also uh, most of our uh, laboratory, they are not able to the are the viral working setup. So if, uh, if you are, uh, definitely we are, uh, even uh, one of my senior, he did his attempt for uh, developing uh, small molecules from the nudibranch animal for the anti-HIV activities. Now he is working in US. So a lot of opportunities are, the lot of uh, uh, the molecules or source are available for this. So we have a participant from West Bengal, uh, yes. Debadatta Das who yeah. is very much interested in your research and would like to uh, join uh, with you in collaboration and do some research. He is asking whether it, there is a scope for joining together, a collaboration with you. Yeah, yeah, yes. All the national as well as the international collaborations, we are very much welcoming you. As per your interest, you are always welcome and uh, just you can uh, search in the Google uh, uh, search engine, just Armugam in Marine Innocence. You can easily contact me and immediately I will uh, replying for your interest. Yes, sir. And uh, some of the students who are doing their uh, master's or degree in pharmacology, they would like to know uh, how useful will the marine biology studies be for pharmacology, sir? Yeah, yeah. And uh, my, dear, my dear friend, actually, this kind of the develop, developing a lead molecules are the drugs. This is not a one man show. All, all the responsibilities. As a marine biologist, we should know how the animals are surviving on the environments. And uh, the, some of the fellows, for example, the chemistry people, pharmacological people, biotechnological people, even engineering people, they should share the hands. The backbone is the marine biologist, but remaining all the disciplines are the disciplined people. They are, once they are ready to share the hands in the sense, definitely we can give the better products to our society. Yes. And, and there is another question, sir. They would like to know the scope of marine biology in the future, sir. Yeah, my dear friend. And uh, you know, the Center of Advanced Study in Marine Biology, this is the only center uh, as Center of Advanced Study in Marine Biology. We are offering the courses, MSc Marine Biology and Oceanography, MSc Marine Biotechnology, MSc Coastal Aquaculture, and the MSc Ocean Science and Technology. Especially the MSc Marine Biology and Oceanography, once you have completed the particular degree, our people not only available on the land, our people also available on the space. One of my senior, or one of our senior, uh, he is Professor Kasturi uh, Venkateshan. Now he is working on the NASA, space research. He, be, he is basically marine biologist. You can imagine how the marine biologist is working on the NASA. What is the relevance from ocean to uh, space? So all these things, it depends on uh, the interests and this kind of the informations. And almost all the marine biologists are the aquaculture, even the uh, biotechnology students, maximum all of our students available on the uh, international platform. They are doing it, doing, uh, what is that? They are doing the research and they are dealing with a uh, uh, um, uh, lot of research, especially uh, they are working as a postdoc fellow, researcher, etc. So a lot of scopes and opportunities are available. All these things it depends on the on your interest. That means students' interest. Uh, there is another question, sir, regarding the sea back the bacteria from the marine uh, origin. Yeah. Are these bacteria culturable in the laboratory for testing and uh, getting novel enzymes? Yeah, very very good question. Very good question. And uh, the culturing the bacteria. It is not much possible while in captive or laboratory in condition, especially the marine bacteria. But some other bacteria that have easily cultured, or we can challengingly culture on their laboratory or in captive condition. That is possible. But we should work on that, how we can uh, 
culturing the marine organisms in the in captive condition that is another challenging task uh, for us okay sir and uh, there is another participant who has asked about the scope of coral conservation through marine biology sir yeah then then uh, once you are uh, the uh, what is the researchers or the marine biologists uh, they should know the biology of coral reefs and once you should know the biology of coral reefs definitely you can uh, you can maintaining their natural diversity of coral reef into the natural environment that is possible okay sir uh, so a lot of participants have uh, appreciated the presentation sir and they would even like to have the Uh, ppt of yours uh, maybe they can co uh, contact you in your website and request for the same yeah uh, once again i would like to thank you very much for this uh, wonderful informative session sir i request uh, maslamani selvam sir uh, to say a few words yeah dr maslamani sir uh, maybe uh, we, his connection is uh, yes, sir. yes sir dr armun yeah hello yeah i'm telling you yes sir yes sir yeah, yeah. so good very good afternoon to all of you that uh, arun sir so you have given a elaborate lecture on uh, drugs from the sea it's uh, thank you very much sir so it's a uh, really useful to the Uh, participants, all the participants, and uh, uh, very very thank you, sir. Even though the internet connection is unstable, still you have managed. Uh, so thank you very much, sir. And uh, tomorrow's speaker, uh, Professor Doctor K. Kadrasen, D.Sc., and uh, he will be talking on mangroves and uh, aquaculture. Uh, please be on time at uh, four o'clock. and uh, it will be very interesting as well as informative and uh, so once again thank all the participants uh, for attending this webinar and uh, see you tomorrow thank you thank you thank you, thank you sir thank you very much sir. once again sir yeah thank, thank you, you to all the participants please do join us tomorrow thank you one and all